Hello everyone, this is Gideon Clint. This is a reproduction of a demonstration I gave during the first Portland Area Moto Users Group. It's about how to use indirect range at extremely low values to achieve a GI look for your renders that is fast and noise free. As we all know, trying to reproduce deformations in an animation and keep it from having uh, a noisy look is kind of hard. So that's why I chose to share this method. Um, it's not perfect, but that said, let's go ahead and dive right in and get into it. Uh, before we get further into it though, I want to go over what I've labeled as traditional methods. Uh, I'm citing these as traditional methods going back maybe six years from now. Uh, before that, uh, I would actually say conventional lighting was more of a traditional method. But So let's look at what we currently use in Moto to uh, animate, do renders that are uh, for animation. So the first option is Monte Carlo plus Iridian's Cache, which is the default setup of the render engine for Moto. Um, I use this all the time for illustration stills and other uh, still imagery. It works really great. It looks beautiful. You can get away with lots of uh, different uh, settings. You can get pretty low. Um, and since you're not animating it, none of the noise shows up. And for the most part, the viewer can't see it. Uh, every once in a while, we'll even paint out a little bit in Photoshop. Not really an option unless you have a army of rotoscopers available uh, if, you, if you're doing a long animation. Uh, the second option, which is a really good option, is Monte Carlo alone. It's very effective, but uh, as anyone can tell you who's tried to use it, you're going to get exceptionally long render times. Um, if you're trying to get rid of all of the noise or most of the noise, uh, and that would be kind of a salt and peppery kind of noise. Uh, the next option is Monte Carlo plus a Radiance Cache, and you just up both samples quite a bit, um, trying to leverage the power of each one. Uh, the problem is, is that you have to keep getting uh, the values higher and higher to prevent what looks kind of like a boiling um, noise that travels across the surface of the object. Um, so that said, let's look at what indirect range method uh, gives us. It's fast, it's noise free, um, it's also highly reliable. You can reuse it over and over again once you get one set up. Um, it can be uh, globally applied to your scene, and therefore it's very good for character animation. It's a great method to use as kind of a starting point to base the foundation of your direct lighting from. Um, so if you're familiar with using direct lighting, then I, f I feel this could be a really good uh, base point to start from, especially if you've developed an HDRI that you know is going to work for your scene. Um, you could use it as almost a way to provide uh, a, a nicer GI-like fill light and then layering your direct lighting over the top. The uh, the, the thing, though, with this method is, since I keep talking about how you'll probably want to use direct lighting, is that obviously whenever you go into more and more direct lighting, it's going to be a lot more labor intensive on the setting up your scene side often. Uh, but what you gain, of course, is a faster render. So it's kind of a ratio. If you're only rendering 30 frames and it's only going to take six hours to render those 30 frames, but it's going to take you 10 hours to set up the scene in this method, well obviously it's not going to work. However, if you have an animation that's 1200 frames long and each frame, if you use regular GI, is, is going to take say an hour long uh, versus say a half an hour long, well, and it's maybe only 10 hours to set up the lighting for that scene, uh, obviously uh, a uh, direct lighting method is going to be advantageous and so this indirect range method on top of that is going to be applicable. So I've gone ahead and I've prepared a couple different images that will help display the time differences that you could get using this indirect range version versus the classic Monte Carlo. Let's go ahead and look at a indirect range uh, version. This is straight indirect range. There's no GI in the scene unless you call uh, ambient occlusion GI. I do not. Um, 
you can see here that it's 49.5 seconds. Now I'm going to zoom in on this arm down here because I'm about to switch to the time equivalence if you use straight Monte Carlo to achieve a similar image. Now as you can see we have some uh, different kind of lighting going on. There's going to be a few differences but uh, I got them relatively close. Uh, you can see the render times are very close. They're basically both 49.5 seconds but if we look in here and uh, hopefully it's going to come through on the video, I'm pretty sure it is, you can still see that there's this uh, salt and pepper kind of noise, uh, especially if we look down here on the, I guess you could call them pants on this character, I wouldn't really call them pants, but his red pant area uh, displays the noise pretty well, uh, probably because of the higher contrast, but if we go back, you can see on the indirect range version, it's really smooth. There's no noise in this render. Um, so the third um, version I'm going to show is Monte Carlo that's starting to get to the point where the noise is, is uh, hard to see and you would probably be able to get away with it. You can still see there's a little bit of noise here on this version. Uh, in the skin it's much harder to see. I mean obviously since it's Monte Carlo uh, the calculation is going to look a lot nicer than just our indirect range version. Here's the indirect range version so there's a little bit more detail in it. But we're still getting some noise and you can see that the render is at 2 minutes 34 seconds. Now depending on what you're going through uh, roughly a minute to two and a half minutes might not seem that much, especially if you're doing a still. Um, I would probably go with the Monte Carlo one and just jack it up a bit and suck up the render time. But of course, a lot of times you're going to be dealing with very complex scenes, and that's where this indirect range could really come uh, into benefit for you, especially even if you are going to use Monte Carlo on a few main key elements. Uh, say you had like an island scene, uh, your front, call it hero, foreground object, say it's an island and maybe you have a float plane, you might want to do those in full-blown Monte Carlo, but why not in the background? Go ahead and use indirect range. You could use the same HDRI that you're going to use for the Monte Carlo rendering and get away with a lot of render uh, time savings. So let's go ahead and look at if we, uh, I went ahead and arrayed this character out as instances just to kind of show the multiplier effect of what happens. So here we have um, a version of the indirect range and obviously the uh, color is going to be different than if we show the Monte Carlo version, but not that big of a difference. However, if we look at the render time difference, this indirect range version is at a minute and 42 seconds, and the Monte Carlo version is at five, minute, uh, five minutes, 3.5 seconds. So you can see that pretty much we're getting a, uh, more than twice the render time to get approximately uh, the same look. Now I didn't spend a lot of time on my indirect range version trying to get the, the lining set up and matched. I pretty much rotated an HDRI map uh, and threw some AO on uh, some ambient occlusion and called it good. So obviously you could get a little bit better but I think the render times speak for themselves. Okay so let's go ahead and look at a little uh, animation I did. Uh, this is going to be a quick time so there's a little bit of compression noise there but as we rotate through it you can see we're not getting any of the boiling and we're not getting the salt and pepper that we would have gotten otherwise. Um, and this rendered at about roughly uh, 10 frame or 10 seconds per frame uh, was a HD render so pretty fast. So let's look at the scene. Uh, I stripped out the scene so that we could go through it. Um, as you can see there's no lighting going on right now. We have no lights uh, uh, active in the scene and there's currently no HDRI going in the scene. The light that we have is pretty much only responsible for specularity. I've turned off any diffuse contribution. So that's mainly to bring out some of these highlights and add uh, different parts to the buttons because um, we could go ahead and use reflections, but for this case in point, uh, it was just faster to go ahead and use specularity, plus you get a little bit more control out of light. Not the most realistic, but that's what I went with for the scene. So we're going to turn that off for now. Um, we're going to go ahead and load in an image to use as our radiance map, 
or sorry, our background HDRI. I'm going to go ahead and use this orange and blue lights, number two. This comes with the content um, that you would get with your 601 license. If you haven't downloaded the content, uh, it, it would be wise to do so. It's really nice to have all these different HDRIs to start out with, along with all of the other meshes and scene files that you get. So let's open it up. Um, it's unfortunately been dropped into the wrong area, so we're just going to drag it down into the Environment tab, or under the Environment section. And you can see that we're getting something, but uh, obviously it's wrong, and that would be because this is not set to Probe. So I'm going to go ahead and set this image to Probe. You can see that the colors are starting to come out. Okay, now here's what, uh, a few key things we're going to do here are, first off, unless you're trying to match an actual plate or a scene, um, one thing you might want to do is kind of set up with a simple HDRI like this that has several lights, and then just go ahead and rotate it until you get the look that you want. I actually want to go the other direction. I, I think I want it to be warmer his face, cooler to his back. So let's just kind of rotate it around. Now Obviously, if you're trying to match your scene based off an HDRI that you shot yourself from the real world or from a, a, a CG scene you're working on, you're going to want to match it exactly. But since this is just a demonstration, we're just going to get it to where I find it's somewhat pleasing. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and lower the gamma. This, this is all un, unnecessary. This is just subjective. But I kind of want to get a little more contrast out of light source. I'll go ahead and up the range value. 